Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on the Godzilla series with Godzilla vs. Monster Zero, or Invasion of Astro Monster. Technically, Invasion of Astro Monster is considered to be the official title, but when this was later released in the U.S. by Harry G. Saperstein, it was released under the title Monster Zero, and later on television and later video releases simply called it Godzilla vs. Monster Zero. So in this video, I'm going to be referring to it as that, because that's the title I'm mostly familiar with. Now, this came out in 1965, and this is the sixth film in the Godzilla franchise, and is once again directed by Shiro Honda and written by Singichi Sekuzawa. And the film acts as a direct sequel to the previous Godzilla film, Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, which was the first film in the series to introduce the character of King Ghidorah, who has become arguably Godzilla's greatest antagonist. Now, that movie also featured Godzilla, Rodan, and Mothra going up against King Ghidorah, and this movie was meant to be sort of a rematch of those four monsters, but for budgetary reasons, Mothra had to be written out of the movie. Now, what the plot of Godzilla vs. Monster Zero, or Invasion of Astro Monster, is it follows these two astronauts, one from Japan and one from the U.S., named Fuji and Glenn, who are sent to investigate the this newly discovered planet dubbed Planet X. When they get there, they discover that the planet is home to a technologically advanced civilization that has apparently been driven underground by a space monster whom they call Monster Zero, but we soon learn is actually King Ghidorah, who previously attacked Earth during the events of the previous film. So, basically, long story short, the people of Planet X are asking the people of Earth for permission to transport the monsters Godzilla and Rodan to their planet planet to defeat King Ghidorah in exchange for the cure for cancer. So, the people of Earth agree to let them use these monsters, but Fuji and Glenn fear that the people of Planet X might have ulterior motives, and it turns out these fears are correct. It turns out that all this was a ruse so they could get control of Godzilla, Rodan, and King Ghidorah and release them upon the Earth, and now if the Earth people don't meet their demands, these monsters will destroy human civilization as we know it, so now Fuji and Glenn and a few other characters have to stop them. And that's the basic plot of Godzilla vs. Monster Zero, or Invasion of Astro Monster, and it's really more of an alien invasion film than a proper kaiju film. Like, it's really more of an alien invasion film that just happens to feature Godzilla and the other monsters. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, because I actually think this is a really good alien invasion movie. Now, at this point in the Godzilla series, the films were getting progressively goofier and goofier, and were starting to get geared more towards children. Now, this film certainly has some goofy stuff in it, but the actual alien invasion story and the human story in this is actually taken pretty seriously, even though the aliens have ridiculous costumes in the film. And in the film, you actually get some social commentary, obviously not the same kind of social commentary you got in the original Godzilla film, and the film's not taken as seriously as that original film was, but in the film you realize that the aliens are pretty much controlled by their own technology. Basically, in the movie, the aliens make all their decisions based on what this computer tells them. Essentially, the computer has become their god, and any member of their race who disobeys the computer is executed, so I feel like there's definitely a social commentary in the film about how attached we're becoming to our own technology. And you kind of get the implication in the film that the people of Planet X at one point might not have been all that different from us, but they sort of lost their souls to their technology. Or maybe I'm just reaching way deeper than was actually intended, but again, while the human story and the alien invasion story is taken seriously in the film, the monster stuff is still pretty goofy. I mean, you have a scene in this movie, and this is one of the most infamous moments in the Godzilla franchise, but you have a scene in this movie after a battle with King Ghidorah on Planet X where Godzilla actually does a jig. 
I shit you not, he does a jig. Now, from what I understand, Ashiro Honda did not want to include this jig in the movie because he did not like the direction the series was taken at this point because he made the original Godzilla as an anti-war statement and as a legitimately serious film and as a film for adults and he did not like that the series was starting to become more kid-friendly. But it was really Eiji Superaya, the special effects director for these movies, who wanted these films to get geared more towards children because at this point in the series, the adult audience for these movies was really starting to dwindle and Eiji Superaya knew that children were going to see these movies and he did not want to scare children, so he wanted these Godzilla films to be more like kids' films. This was something that Honda was really against, but Eiji Superaya had all the power at Toho, so this whole jig that Godzilla does in the movie, that was really Eiji Superaya's call. Now, you could tell that this film is working with a significantly lower budget than the previous films because at one point in the movie when Rodan is attacking the city, being controlled by the aliens, they actually use stock footage from the first Rodan movie. Now, in the film, the character of Fuji is played by Akira Takarada, who played Ogata in the original Godzilla film, and he also played one of the main characters in Mothra vs. Godzilla. Now, Akira Takarada is great in the movie, but I will say the character of Fuji is a bit of a dick. Like, just the way that he constantly gets involved in his sister's personal life. Like, he hates the guy that his sister's dating, but it's like, dude, your sister's a grown woman, she can make her own decisions. But I understand a lot of that is a cultural thing, so I really can't criticize the character of Fuji too much for that. But I like how they play on that in the film where the character of Glenn, who's American, doesn't really get why Fuji is so obsessed with who his sister's dating. Now, Glenn is played by American actor Nick Adams, and I actually think him and Akira Takarada have great chemistry with each other despite not actually speaking each other's language. Like, apparently when they were filming this movie, Nick Adams was speaking in English while everybody else was speaking in Japanese, so if you watch the Japanese version, he's dubbed over in Japanese, but if you watch the English version of this movie, everybody else is dubbed over in English while they keep Nick Adams' voice. Now, this was really the first time in the Godzilla series where an American actor co-starred in a Godzilla movie, not counting what they did with Godzilla King of the Monsters, because all the stuff with Raymond Burr was only shot for the American version of that film. Now, this wasn't the first time that Toho did this for their kaiju films, because Nick Adams actually previously co-starred in Frankenstein Conquers the World, also directed by Honda. Now, I'm sure in reality, the reason Nick Adams was casted in this movie was to appeal to Western markets, but if you wanted to read a possible subtext with this, maybe this is a Shiro Honda saying that the wounds of World War II are starting to heal, and the United States and Japan could bury the hatchet. I'm probably reaching way deeper than was actually intended, but it's interesting to note that at the time this movie came out, the war had only been over for 20 years, which in the grand scheme of things, really isn't that long. Now, in the film, Glenn is dating this woman named Miss Namikawa, who turns out to actually be an alien... But she's played by Kumi Mizuno, who also co-starred with Nick Adams in Frankenstein Conquers the World. But apparently her and Nick Adams actually became very close, and apparently he actually proposed to her, but she turned him down because she was already betrothed to be married to somebody else. I find that interesting because I think at the time Nick Adams was technically still married to Carol Nugent, now, in the film, Akira Kubo, if I'm saying his last name right, plays the character of Tesuo, who is this nerdy inventor guy who's dating Fuji's sister. This actor would actually appear in several other Godzilla films, not as the same character. Jun Tasaki, and I'm sure I'm butchering his name, plays Dr. Sakurai. Now, this actor has appeared in many other Godzilla films, never playing the same character. 
Yachio Sucha, and I probably butchered that name, plays the controller of Planet X, who is arguably the main villain of the film. Now, this actor has appeared in several other Godzilla films, but also in many of Akira Kurosawa's films, but it turns out he actually preferred to be in science fiction films. He was a huge science fiction fan, and from what I understand, also had a real interest in UFOs, which is why it's kind of ironic that he plays an alien in the movie. But yeah, I enjoy Godzilla vs. Monster Zero or Invasion of Astro Monster. I think it's a lot of fun. Sure, it might be an uneven balance between trying to be a serious science fiction film, but also being very cheesy, but I still like the movie a lot. Now, even though technically there were aliens in Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, this was really the first Godzilla film to use the premise of aliens taking control of the monsters and using monsters as their their weapons against the human race, and this is a plot line that has been recycled several times throughout the Shoha Godzilla series. The same plot was basically used again in Destroy All Monsters, and then in Godzilla vs. Gigan, and then the two Mecha Godzilla movies. Then in the Millennium series, this plot line was used again in Godzilla Final Wars. Now, the most recent Godzilla film, Godzilla King of the Monsters, even though that was clearly in a different continuity than this, it did include a little reference to this movie where King Ghidorah was codenamed Monster Zero. Now, this is going to be the last point in the video where you're going to see me. Now I want to cut to a short review on this movie done by my friend Christian Feliciano. What's really cool about Godzilla vs. Monster Zero is that it has a lot of moments that you can literally put the sound dun 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 into it because there's just a lot of surprises in it I guess like a lot of twists and stuff because you know of course you have the reveal that Monster Zero on the planet is King Ghidorah and I'm, that's not really a spoiler because if you look at the damn cover of the movie King Ghidorah's on the cover like if they wanted to keep that a secret why would they put it on the cover? He's on the cover of the damn book. And then worse yet, they put the aliens on the cover. So it's like, okay, now I know what's pretty much going to happen in this film. Uh, you kind of see it where it's going, but that's fine. I still enjoy the film to death. I'm just saying the fact that they called it Monster Zero and then you see Ghidorah on the cover, you're like, okay, I guess he's Monster Zero. And here again, we have Godzilla and Rodan teaming up together to take down Ghidorah. Um, I won't go further than that in the plot. I'm not going to have any more spoilers than that. But you get to a point where you kind of can see where this is going to go, how that all turns out. And it's fine. It doesn't matter. It's still a very fun film. I like the way it plays out. I like how they able to do that little twist because there is a second twist after that. And it is a lot of fun. Um, I enjoy it to death. I really enjoy that Godzilla and, and Rodan are together again. It's kind of like uh, you know Spider-Man and Daredevil teaming up again. That to me is just really fun to see these two together. Once villains and now they're friends. You know that's awesome. That whole you know boy power thing, fun. Uh, <laughs> the characters in this film are a lot of fun. The writing is really good. A really really fun film. Uh, and yeah, uh, Godzilla vs. Monster Zero is a very fun film, and I recommend. Everybody, especially if you've been watching them up to this point, check out Godzilla vs. Monster Zero. You will really enjoy it. You'll enjoy it more than King Ghidorah because it is better written than King Ghidorah. I'll admit that right away. Even though I love King Ghidorah more, it is a better made film than King Ghidorah. This is actually really, really well made. It's a, it's a really, really good film. And it has some important messages in it and has some things about technology and stuff that's really cool and and, it, and it, it's it's a good way of, of pointing out the way we are with our technology I, I love how they're able to do that and yeah thank you so much bye bye